I don't like the Cowboys at all this year. I will be looking to wager against them. And one thing Colin didn't mention, I mean, brand new head coach. I know it's addition by subtraction. Jason Garrett struggled last year, but I don't like this team, as he said, defensively. You lost your leading sack guy. You lost your number one player in the secondary. I think the Cowboys are going to be overvalued because you guys know this. The general public loves to bet offense. Well, you get C.D. Lamb, you toss him in the mix. Everybody's going to be gambling on the Cowboys. They're going to be overvalued. I would be looking to fade Dallas in the early season. Of course. Yeah. Well, Eric, agree or disagree with them? Yeah, I, I agree with Dallas. I mean, I look at not only is that division hard, the AFC or the NFC, excuse me, has always been difficult. But you look at their schedule, um, as Colin said, with Seattle, with Atlanta, with Pittsburgh. I mean, their schedule out of conference is exceptionally difficult. So I think that's I think that's big. And then I, I would go on the flip side of that. Teams to start three and zero. Look at the San Francisco. I mean, they've got the powder puff schedule right off the bat. And I think one of the big things is continuity, right? Nobody's getting their cleats on the grass. Nobody's practicing. Nobody's going through OTAs. You're going to have a couple of new players there, but it's the same system, the same coach doing the same things they have done, creating the matchups that they create. I think that is huge for the Niners, a huge advantage in starting these season, this season off as peculiar as this offseason is. Starting this off strong is going to make a huge difference as you press into the season. I think San Francisco's got a great chance to start off 3-0 and and really set themselves up. Jason, when you take a look at these first three weeks before we let you go, um, you know, what what's something that we should be looking for other than Dallas? Well, I'm, you know, picking up on what Mark said, the Eagles are my pick here, without question. You look at two of their first three games, Carissa, they're facing the Redskins who have a new head coach and a quarterback who started, what, six games in Mr. Haskins? And then after they play the Rams, I think a very winnable game. Rams had a lot of turnover. You're facing the Bengals, and Colin touched on it earlier. Joe Burrow, a guy who's going to have a truncated offseason at best. And we're looking at the Eagles. They're facing two of the bottom three teams for expected wins next year. Philadelphia should start 3-0. and They're actually undervalued. Uh, we talk about Carson Wentz a lot in continuity. Peterson and Wentz, the rest of the division had turnover, either at coach or a quarterback. I think the Eagles are definitely the class of the NFC East, definitely starting 3-0. and And look at these teams. Look at these five teams. All of them return a what we consider to be an excellent head coach and a more than competent quarterback. I think it's the year of top coaches and top quarterbacks that have worked together at least a couple of years. Uh, those those teams right there, Doug Peterson and Wentz and Mahomes and Reed and Harbaugh and Lamar Jackson, Breeze, uh, uh, Sean Payton, Kyle Shanahan, Jimmy Garoppolo. There's never been a season in my life I feel stronger about quarterback coaching combos that are elite that are working together for the second or third year these teams could all go three and oh i'd feel comfortable i'd be surprised if most of these teams didn't go three and oh for the best access perspective and personalities in all of sports follow us at fox sports on twitter facebook instagram and youtube